Welcome to the video on attacking and capturing pieces. In this video, you will learn the next step now that you know how each piece moves, as well as how to set up the board to begin a game properly. Besides moving the pieces, you're going to be faced with situations where pieces can take each other. That is a fundamental part of the game. Oftentimes, you want to try to eliminate your opponent's pieces one by one, as many as possible. So it's important to learn how to properly attack and capture pieces. This is also a good refresher for those of you who want to test themselves on how the pieces move. In this first diagram, take a look at the white position and try to see how white can attack or capture one of black's pieces. Each of these diagram examples that I will show today, it's good training and practice to try to guess what the best move or moves are before I go over it. So in this first diagram, looking at the bishop here on d3, if we remember how a bishop moves, it's as many squares as possible in a diagonal line. Okay, so just like this. And you will see that black's knight is in the line of danger on the g6 square. So it's under attack. Now if it's white's move, white can take this piece. When you capture a piece in chess, all you do is move the piece to that square, taking the piece, and then remove that piece from the board. So for example, it looks like this. Bishop takes g6, or bishop takes knight. The knight is no longer in play. Don't keep it on the board. It is removed from the board after being captured. Next example, same situation. It is white to play and try to find the capture in this position. Focusing on the queen here on a6, recall that the queen is the most powerful piece in chess because it can move as many squares as it chooses, forwards, backwards, side to side, and diagonally. So a combination of a rook and a bishop together. Mapping this out, the queen's scope looks like this. Okay, and you will also see here that the rook is directly in line of danger. One thing to point out is that if you are capturing a piece, you can't go through it. Let's pretend that for whatever reason you wanted to bypass this rook here on c4. You could not move your queen from here to d3, for example. This would be illegal. If you go that direction and you go to the c4 square where the rook is currently occupied, you need to capture it. You can't go through the piece. Okay? So in this position, the best move, queen takes c4. Probably getting the hang of it by now. This position, looking at it from the black side of things, okay, focusing on the knight. Remember, the knight is a tricky piece. There are going to be some specific examples coming up to further clarify for you. But remember that the knight moves in an L shape in any combination of 2 plus 1 squares. All right, so mapping out its path from this point on c6, it can move to any of these squares. And you will see, of course, that the white rook is currently under attack, and the knight can capture it. Okay, the next piece, the rook. Recall it moves as many squares as it wants, forwards, backwards, and side to side. So same thing, looking at its scope, you will see that the enemy bishop is in its path, and the rook can take it. Now this is an interesting example because here we see two bishops staring at each other, right? And here it matters because when you have a situation like this, right? It matters whose move it is. Because in most capture situations, depending on whose move it is, you may have the advantage. So for example here, if it's white to move, white can take the bishop on h6. But 
If it's black to move, then black can take the bishop on f4. So it all really depends. And you're going to find situations like this throughout your games. More to come on that later. And finally, focusing on the king. Remember that the king is a pretty simple piece. It can move in any direction that it chooses. However, only one square at a time. So in this case, looking at its all available options, you can see that the knight is able to be captured here on g2. And upon doing so, one quick thing you guys should know, and this will be reinforced later on, but whenever there are only two kings remaining on the board, this is called a stalemate, and the game ends in a tie or a draw. Since there are no pieces left on the board that can checkmate either king, there is no more play to be had, and the game ends in a draw, which means a tie in chess. Okay, so I highlighted this earlier, but it's important to see it again visually. So, same type of exercise, looking at the white queen here on c3 and thinking about its scope. Okay, so just to highlight all the possible squares that it can move to. Notice that the bishop is also in line with the queen on the c file, but this queen cannot go through the knight to capture this bishop on c7. That's a very important point. So if something's in the way and you want to capture a piece behind it, you cannot do so. You have to first capture the piece in front of it like this. Okay? And similarly, obviously, if you have one of your own pieces occupying a square in one of your pieces' way, you can't go like this, for example, and just replace it with one of your other pieces. All right, one of your pieces is blocking your path. You cannot go through that piece. And same thing with the enemy pieces, with the exception, of course, the piece that's in front. If you do a quick scan of what piece can capture another one from the white perspective, you'll find that the answer is actually none at all. Okay, so an easy way to figure this out is say, okay, let's take one piece at a time. Okay, so let's focus on the queen first. Ask yourself, what are all the possible squares it can move to? All right, so mentally and visually, you may map something out like this. Okay, but since this knight on c6 is now of the white color and it's white's own piece, this white queen cannot go through these pieces. You can't capture this bishop on c7 through the piece on c6. And likewise, you can't play queen to c6 anymore because your knight is currently occupying that square. Similarly, focusing on the knight, if we were to map out its pattern of where it can move, remember the L shape of two and one square combinations, we'll see too that none of black's pieces are on any of these squares. Okay, so in this specific situation, none of black's pieces can be captured immediately on this move. All right, so focusing on the knight for a second, remember this diagram from a few ones ago where it was a very simple capture of the rook on b4? Well, the reason the knight can be a little tricky is because you could be faced with a situation like this, all right, where... In chess, there are going to be times where multiple pieces can be captured by multiple pieces. All right, it's not all just going to be as simple as 1v1. In this case, what I want you to do is think to yourself, what are all the possible captures that white can make in this position? And pay special attention to the knight in this case. All right. So the answer that you should have come up with is there are five possible captures that white can play in this position. So here they are. And again, as you get better and better at this, this will get easier. But what I recommend is just go piece by piece and do a scan. With every piece, ask yourself, okay, what are all the possible squares it can move to? Are any of the opposing pieces in the way? All right, so focusing on the queen right here on c4, you will notice that it can take one, two, 
or three potential pieces. In case there was any further confusion, you can't take multiple pieces in the same move. Okay, so just because this queen is attacking all three of these pieces doesn't mean you can take more than one in one move. That's not possible. Okay, so you have to choose which one to take. More on that in a second. All right, so that's three possible captures. And then focusing on this knight here on c3, you might have discovered that there are two possible captures, one and two. So knight takes d5 is probably the trickiest one that you might have missed, all right? And the reason why you might have missed it is because I made the point earlier that you can't go through your other pieces. But remember, the knight is a special piece. Just like a horse in real life, it can jump over other pieces. And this is the only piece in the game of chess with this exception, okay? So it can jump over both your own pieces and the opposing pieces. It does not matter. All that matters is you move it properly, make it land on the correct square, and if another piece happens to be there, that is a successful capture. So there are five potential captures in this position. So what happens when you're in a situation where there's not an immediate capture? Okay, so take this position for example. You'll notice from the white perspective and the black perspective that neither the queen or the rook can currently take each other. Right? They're on opposing files. The rook is not on a, on a diagonal. So, in chess, you often want to attack your opponent's pieces, right? Which may take more than one move. The question is how to do this properly. It's very important to remember that when you attack your opponent's pieces, you don't want to put your piece in a vulnerable position either. So you have to think about, hey, if I move here to attack my opponent's piece, can he capture me? Either with that piece or another one. Is my piece vulnerable? So taking this situation, for example, if I want to put this queen in a position to capture this rook, how do you think I would do that? All right. So in your mind, you have to think about how the queen moves and then try to move it to a square that it can attack this piece. Now, you may have thought about making a move like this, for example, queen to a3. Why? Well, because I know the queen moves as many squares as it wants forwards. So if I put the queen in this position, then next move, I can successfully capture this rook on a8. However, remember what I said. After making your move, you don't get to make two moves in a row. Now, black can actually take your queen for free, which would be a big error. Okay? Instead, some of you might have found a move like queen to b7, for example. So how is this different? Well, with the queen here on b7, you're still attacking this rook on a8. And if black does not successfully defend it or move it properly, you can capture it next move. However, with the queen on b7, this rook cannot take this queen because rooks cannot move diagonally. All right, so this is an example of the first step of how to think uh, more than one move ahead. All right, you have to be careful that when you attack your opponent's pieces, you do so in a way where you're not putting your own piece in danger. Take a look at this position from the black side of things. Okay, so you have this rook here on f7. If you were to try to attack one or two of white's pieces here, how do you think you would do so? The correct answers are either rook to h7 or rook to f4. The reason why is because with either of these options, you are moving your rook to a location where the next move you can capture the bishop if it is not moved or defended. So in either of these circumstances, the rook is safe here. Now, if you were to try to find a way to capture this rook on g2, that would be extremely difficult, right? Because the only ways to really do so 
would be to move here to g7, for example. But this would not be a good idea because then what could white do? Well, now since it's white's turn, white can capture this rook on g7. Similarly, if the black rook were to go to f2, again with the idea to take this piece next move, you'll notice that any of white's pieces can take this poor rook on f2, either the king, the rook, or the bishop. So this would certainly not be a good idea. One of the unique things about the knight, besides how it moves and the fact that it can jump over pieces, is that it is the only piece in the game that can attack multiple pieces at once, but can also not be under attack by those same pieces, unless it's a knight. So that might have sounded a little confusing, but let me explain. So take a look at this position here. This knight on d5 is simultaneously attacking four of black's pieces, which you may see. However, none of those four pieces can successfully capture that knight on d5 in one move. All right? The only way that one of black's pieces that's being attacked could capture that knight on d5 is if it was also a knight. Visualize, if any one of these black pieces were a knight, then it could capture this white knight on d5. But because it's not, right now the white knight is safe and can take one of black's pieces on its next move. All right. Thinking about this example, take a look at the white bishop on f3. If you had to try to attack one of black's pieces, what do you think you would do? One of the first things that you should remember is that because the bishop only moves across its own diagonal, any piece that is not on its own color cannot be captured by that bishop, right? So, for example, as long as any of black's pieces are on dark squares currently, they cannot be captured by this bishop on f3. So what does that leave? Well, it leaves this rook here on d7 as the only possibility. All right? So taking a look at this rook on d7, what do you think you would do here for white? Well, there are two options. Option number one is bishop to g4, which would attack the rook this way. And option number two is bishop to c6, which would attack the rook this way. Now the question is, which one do you think is better and why? The answer is bishop to g4. While both moves attack the rook on d7, moving the bishop to c6, while it may look like a good idea, it actually can be captured by this knight on b4. Alright, so a little more advanced here, where you have to think about what your opponent's going to do too, not just on what you would like to do. Wrapping up this video, the final thing you have to think about when attacking your opponent's pieces is which one of your opponent's pieces are defended by each other and which ones are more vulnerable. Remember that each piece has a point value that usually assesses accurately their value. So you don't want to be trading pieces like a queen, for example, for a bishop or a rook by itself, or a knight for that matter, of course, because the queen is worth a lot more than either of those pieces individually. However, if you are able to capture one of those pieces without your queen being taken, then that likely will be a beneficial situation to you. All right, and an easy way to identify how to properly and in the best possible way attack your opponent's pieces is to look at which of your opponent's pieces are already defended and protected by each other. So ask yourself that question. Which one of Black's pieces currently are defended or protecting each other? The answer is this rook and this bishop. So this rook is protected by the knight on c8, and the bishop on h6 is protected by the rook on b6. Okay, so if you were going to try to attack 
either this rook or this bishop, it wouldn't make that much sense because the threat of you trading off your queen for one of those pieces that are, are, are already defended would not be a good decision for you as white. Instead, we need to focus on the piece that is not protected by anything currently, which is this knight here on c8. That's a good process of elimination way to identify how to figure out which piece to attack in a given position. So in this case, there are many options for how to best attack the knight on c8, but probably two of the best are either queen to d7, which also puts the king in check, by the way, or queen to d8. Strongly attacking this knight on c8. And then, if you're really understanding, thinking about multiple moves ahead, if this knight that is under attack moves somewhere, you'll notice that the queen can now take this rook successfully because the knight is no longer defending it. Alright, this is an introductory video to attacking and capturing layers of more complications and more intricate ideas with attacking and capturing will be added later. Feel free to practice the exercises associated with this video, and thank you for watching.